Please rise as we begin our worship. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, King who comes to save us. Put not your trust in princes, in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord and his God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness, for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will I instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and what, with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness Preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Put not your trust in princes, in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord his God. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn. Eternity. 
reading from Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly here, I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Be'er Lahai Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram called the name of his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. This is the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Galatians chapter 4. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave woman and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, while the son of the free woman was born through promise. Now this may be interpreted allegorically. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you who are not in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. Now you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. But just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so also it is now. But what does the Scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son, for the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So brothers, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom Christ has set us free, Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. This is the word of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We rise to hear the Holy Gospel. <coughs> Our Gospel lesson <coughs> from Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, 
the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill be made low. And the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, he said therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be poured out upon you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now some years when we talk about things in Advent, we talk about the prophecies in the Old Testament that explain where and when and how and whose relatives the newborn Savior would be. Well this year we have a series and they wanted me to use it so I did. It was about some catas catastrophic wild, troublesome things in the Old Testament, but where God keeps his promises. And so, like they say, let that be a lesson to you. As we see how God keeps these promises in the darkest and most difficult of times, what does that say about how he'll keep his promises to us today and tomorrow and the next day? Tonight's text is about Genesis chapter 16 where there is a family disaster occurring. God spoke to Abram and Sarah. At the time, he was Abram, and she was Sarai. Abraham means the father of the people. Abram means somebody's father. He hadn't quite become the guy to whom the promise was fulfilled. Sarai means the sad, brokenhearted one. Sarah means she who laughs and rejoices. God hadn't kept his promise to her yet. In fact, the wait between the promise given and the promise being fulfilled caused Sarah, Sarai, Sarah, to have some doubts. And so she decided to borrow a method that the other people around her, who had different rules and different commandments, used to get things done. As though God were kind of busy and needed a nudge. Maybe he was tired, you know he's old, and he needed a helping hand to keep this promise. So she seized upon the notion of taking her maidservant and dragging her into the tent where Abram was, wink, wink, and gave her to him as a wife. And according to Canaanite law, here where they lived, if the servant got pregnant, the first wife could adopt the child and it would be counted as her son. And so Sarah said, that's not quite what the promise was, but it's good enough for me. It sounds a little tricky, but we'll get it done. Ouch. God's promises are wonderful. God's promises are sweet. When you trust them and they come true, it makes you feel like a million bucks, and it reminds you that God is big and strong and honest and true, and he loves us. This is the God who sticks his nose into our business. Now, sometimes we don't see his footprints that much. 
But you know, if you're on a roll and doing fine on your own, I think he focuses on the other people who are stuck in the ditch. But sometime he will. He'll break in. And when you look back, you can see some blessings. Oh, I got to do this all those years ago. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. God gave me gifts and abilities, and I wanted to use them so I had my chance and I could go to school and get to do this and that. Biographical note. I knew I wanted to be a pastor when I was five. I was amazed that my parents knew about it because I hadn't really told them. In fact, they'd been telling me the same thing since before I could understand English. Well, turned out fine. I got to do it. God didn't let me down at all. The hard part was waiting the extra 25 years until they finally gave me a church. But you know, you do what you got to do. Sarai wanted this done. Now, she was well past childbearing age. So was Abram. But God came to her and made her a promise. You'll have a son. The promise said that you, from your son, you will be the father of a great nation with so many descendants, they'll be like the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the seashore. Too many to count. You'll own this land we call Canaan, the promised land, Palestine, and one of your descendants will be the one to come and save and bless all nations. That was the promise, and I think they believed it. Sarah believed it enough so that when it didn't happen, she was going to make it happen by crook or by hook. Come on now. Come on, God. Well, you know when you bend the rules, it doesn't always turn out that well. Hagar conceived. And when she was with child, her attitude toward her mistress changed. Rather than being a humble and faithful servant, whom Sarai trusted, it took a lot of trust to do this, and let her in the tent with Abram, her husband. Now it was contempt. I'm the one with the child. I'm the first wife. Who are you, Sarah? Some dried up old woman. Ha! Well, that was one ha too many. First, Sarai went to Abram. Look what happened. Look how I'm being treated. And then she said, Abram, this is your fault. You judge between me and her. Do something. Abraham, having buckets and buckets of anything but courage, wimped out and said, well, you know, she's your servant. You, you take care of it. At that point, Sarah drove her out of the camp. Now, while in the wilderness, the Lord came to Hagar and said, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? Where are you going to? And she said, oh, I'm running for my life. The mistress wanted to do me in. We got problems. The Lord said to her, I will multiply your offspring so they can't be counted. There's so many. Now, I imagine this confused Hagar a little bit because she wasn't totally convinced that she'd have one baby or there'd be a mama when this all ended. She was out in the wilderness with nothing. And then the angel of the Lord says, you're pregnant and shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael. Ishmael is Jewish for this guy listens to God. Because the Lord has listened to your affliction, he shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. Warlike creature, he was better at making enemies than he was at making friends. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. Well, Hagar is thrilled. She called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she says, truly, I have seen him who watches over me. They called the place Be'er Lahai Roy. And that means where God is who watches. And it's out in the desert. It says she bore Abram a son, and Abram called him Ishmael. And yes, Abraham was 86 when all this happened. Now, this is a dark day in the Abraham family. Division, hatred, driving some poor woman who's pregnant out into the desert to perish. Ow! If you were looking for Abraham's greatest hits, this, wouldn't one, this one wouldn't be on the record, folks. No. And yet, in all this goofiness, and all this darkness, Something good still happened. While Sarah bent the rules, she bent the rules trying to get the promise. She knew the promise. 
Even though she laughed the first time she heard it, she believed it. God will give us a child, and he will be the great, 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 grandfather of the Savior Messiah, who would set all things right, just like God promised in the Garden of Eden to Eve. She believed. And while it got messy, God stepped in to rescue poor Hagar, and he stepped in to keep his promise to Sarai. Wow. After all that trouble, wait a minute, something good happened. Permit me to tell you a story. You knew one was coming. There are two guys sitting there. One is an optimist, and the other one is a pessimist. A fellow came and said, come with me, pessimist. I want to see how you react. So he takes him in a room, and it's knee deep in horse manure. Well, now, the kid shovels a little bit, throws his shovel down and says, this is a waste of time. This is stupid and goes outside, shakes his fist at the guy, and says, you're just wasting my time. I'm not getting anything out of this. I quit. Well, then the guy went to the optimist and said, come on with me, handed him the shovel, took him in the room with all the horse manure, and the kid went crazy, laughing and smiling, and shoveling all around. And the guy asked him, why are you so happy? And he said, with this much horse bleep around, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. God makes a promise. Now, this is important. When God makes a promise, it contains the divine power of God's almighty hand. Paul says it in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Look it up when you get home. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes it. God's promises are so strong that when they hit the heart and the Holy Spirit plants the seed so that we know them and understand them and believe them, it changes us and it changes the universe so that he's got one more excuse to bless you. Oh, wait a minute. God exists to bless me and help me? Yeah. And when God makes a promise, will he keep it? Yes. Now, let's qualify that. Does he promise never to let it rain on your picnic? No, 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 he didn't say that. Did he promise that sin and trouble in the world would never find you and stomp on your toes? Nope, didn't promise that either. Did he promise that there'd be some trouble in life, but he'd get you through it, and you could be happy overall? That he did promise. Sometimes God's promise is making you strong enough to handle trouble and still enjoy it. Ah, like the good golfer, who's not afraid of a sand trap? He knows how to get that ball out of the sand trap right on the green next to the cup. Watch the pros do it. If you're good, you can. I don't know how, but they do. Life can be challenging, but with God's help and with faith and hope and with the gifts and power that he plants into us by his promises, he gets us to the promised land and gets us to a good place to where we can say, I've got a victory here. Now, in the scriptures, you've got the word happiness, and there's another Greek word for joy. Happiness is when everything in your life is lined up, it's all going smooth, and everything's great. If you have a real bad toothache, you don't have happiness. Joy is when you're mostly happy about the most important things in life, and you're smiling about most of it, and you feel real good. You may have a toothache, but you're still smiling. It's in Philippians 4, where Paul, speaking for the Almighty, says, Rejoice in the Lord always, I'll say it again, rejoice. Joy, he promises, happiness comes and goes. And thank God for when they do come. Have you had a good day? Well, thank the Lord. Do your best, behave yourself, work hard, be good to people, and give thanks for the good days. But even in the dark hours, there's hope. Because God said, I love these people. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, doesn't say he hated them, doesn't say he was neutral about them, doesn't say he weighed them on a scale to see if they deserved anything. It just says he loved them. Before you ever got here, God knew your name and had a plan to bless you and love you and bring good things into your life. Ah! Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Look it up. And if God's plan for you is blessings and his hope for your heart is happiness and power and strength, just like these two crazy women, Sarah, and Hagar, it's going to turn out all right. 
in the darkest of hours, because someone trusted his promise, did it end up okay? Yes, it did. Now, as I look to the future, I hear things about recessions. I see military and security threats all over the globe. They're shooting and bombing each other in Ukraine. I hear about changes in culture and legal this and legal that. And folks have a right to be a little bit nervous. Back before we had 24-7 news coverage, the world didn't seem as scary. Well, we know more about it, so it's right in front of you. You can't sleep at night, so you get up at 3.30 in the morning and you hear people talking about disasters all over the world. Oh, Lord, preserve me. But with all the negativity and all the frightening things, I've got something that makes me smile inside. The Lord promised. And in this Advent season, we catch in on the promises of God. He's going to send a Savior. Now, we are in the wonderful historic viewpoint, perfect 2020 hindsight. Oh, he did send a Savior. He keeps his promises. And then when you were born to your mama and your papa, he made the promise, I'm going to love this child. We're going to baptize this child. We're going to take good care of her, and he or she is going to have a great life with some trouble, but mostly lots of blessings. And they're going to serve me, and I'm going to bonus them and reward them for that. Well, tell the truth. He has mostly kept that promise, hasn't he? Well, how many times does the Lord need to bless you and keep a promise before you start saying in your heart of hearts, oh yeah, that's what he does. And the next time trouble comes up, instead of saying, oh no, woe is me. We can say with a full heart, you know, this looks bad, but you know, he's bailed me out all the other times. And even though he's over 65, he's not going to retire. He's got one or more two rescues up his sleeve. I'm going to be just fine. Thank you, Lord. Advent promises have been kept. The Savior came. What Advent promised is that Christ would continue to come today through his word and sacrament as he plants faith and hope and love and joy and confidence in our hearts and in our lives. And then he's got the other Advent promise that says at the end of time, Jesus is coming back to take us all off to heaven. And if we don't live till then, when our own particular individual judgment day passing comes, he'll take us off to heaven and say, come on in. Inherit the kingdom I prepared for you a long time ago. May we understand his promises. May we see that God doesn't mess around with promises. He keeps them. And may we look back on the promises kept and give thanks. Look around us and see the trouble in the world, but say, my God is bigger and stronger than that. And the promise he gives me to take care of me, it will carry me through. It's going to be just fine. Thank you. And may we look down to the future and say, I know where I'm going to heaven, and I know that the trip is going to be full of blessings. Well, thank you, Lord, for that heavenly promise. And thank you for keeping it. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understandings, keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ our Lord all the way to eternal life. Amen. Please rise. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. has 
He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. My soul the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. In his name and as he taught us we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, you have granted precious and great promises to all who believe, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Focus our faith on the knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory, that we may be your true sons and daughters in your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, you demonstrated your might and grace by providing your servants Abraham and Sarah with a son of your own promise. Guide our faith to be always in the true son of Abraham, your only son Jesus, the promise of our salvation and life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Let's see.